Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. In this video, we're gonna talk about why you're addicted to phones and how to stop that addiction. Now as a bonus, stay tuned for the end where I'm gonna teach you real quick how to declutter your phone to make sure that you really don't continue to have to trip over all your apps and really find what you're looking for every time you get on your phone. Otherwise, if you haven't already, make sure to press the subscribe button for more content like this and to stay up to date with everything that I release. Now you may be wondering why are humans getting more and more addicted to cell phones? And there's so many different things that come about during it because we have to think about not just what the cell phone is, but what's on the cell phone, what we're doing on the cell phone and how it's perceived in our minds, right? The first thing is the color of our cell phones is actually addictive in nature. With the color getting better and better, it's producing more dopamine in our brains and it's making us have this positive feedback effect which makes us use the phones more. The same thing is happening, and this is number two, with the fact that our phones are for social uses. So when we get a text message, we get a dopamine surge. When we get a like on Facebook, we get a dopamine surge. And this continues to happen over and over again, which refines this addiction to our phones. Another third thing, something that most people don't often think about is that the algorithms for these different medias that we use, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Google, Instagram, these algorithms that their computer systems are using make it so user interactivity goes up. So you do get more addicted and you wanna be on it more because their algorithms are making it so it's more personalized for you and it feels better and it makes you feel better. I'm actually gonna cut a quick clip to one of the creators of Facebook and their algorithm to show you what he now thinks about the algorithm. Has to control it and rein it in. And it is a point in time where people need to hard break from some of these tools and the things that you rely on. The short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. Well, it's not something that we see day to day. It is something to keep in mind that phone addiction is an actual addiction. It's, it's something that gives us meaning in a world where currently it seems like there may not be that much meaning to be had. So the first tip that I need to give you to break your phone addiction, to become unaddicted to your phone, is turning the color off on your phone. Yes, it may take a little bit of the nature of your phone out. It may make it a little bit more boring. And there's a reason for that. It's making it more unaddicting. It's helping to make sure that you're not addicted to your phone day after day, looking for the color, looking for that dopamine surge. And it's a very easy thing to do to turn into grayscale. And when you need to do, let's say upload an Instagram photo or make sure a color is correct on something, it's so easy to turn grayscale on and off. Let me show you real quick. Okay, so I'm on my phone right now. I'm also gonna put a quick little uh, tutorial on the bottom of the video so you can make sure to see it. In Android, you're gonna go up to the top right and you're gonna press settings. And once you press settings, you're gonna to go to display. Once you're in display, you gotta scroll down to the bottom. You gotta click vision. At vision, it's gotta kinda of like look real weird. You gotta to go to color adjustment. Once you click color adjustment, you're gonna press on grayscale. As soon as you do this, your phone will be in grayscale and you won't be as addicted to it. Almost immediately, it's gonna feel a bit boring, but it's something that is so important. Now, tip number two, is jumble up your apps every so often or like move around your apps and make sure that the display and the screens are different often. So why does this work? Well, when we think about the brain and how doing a repetitive task over and over again creates a neural connection which actually gets strengthened, we need to think about that with our phones. Most people have this weird twitch or this weird thing that happens. I actually got that from Break the Twitch. I'm gonna link this channel as well where you end up just going to your phone and looking through it real quick and clicking exactly what you've done over and over again. And some people will check Instagram, Twitter, Facebook 10 times in a row, even though they didn't realize it, looking for something. And it's the same exact feed over and over again because they didn't even give it time to update. Now, this is the fact that we're building these neural pathways that are so easy to just default on over and over again. We can default on Oh, thumb there, thumb there, okay, cool, we get the gratification. And it becomes a mechanism of response that's so easy to do. It's, it's kind of like how the rats in a lot of the psychological studies will press the lever and they'll learn the buttons to get the food reward. That's what's happening with us, except 
we can change that. And the way to change that is to increase neuroplasticity is to challenge the brain a little bit. And then the task doesn't become as easy. And you start to actually have to consciously think about what you're doing versus the unconscious movement. And the way to do that is to actually move around the apps on your phones, the locations that they're placed in. This is similar to taking a different route home or standing on one leg while brushing your teeth where it starts to increase the neuroplasticity. It starts to bring back the consciousness into the action that you're doing where then you can go, oh, no, I don't want to do that anymore. And you don't have to do it anymore. It's a great way to actually train the brain a bit. And it's a lot harder than you think to find things once you move them around. Because if you truly move them around to random places, you will realize that you go, boom, oh, uh, where's that? Okay, I can't find that thing anymore. And it takes you another 10 seconds of like actually looking. So it's a great way to disrupt that little, I want to reach for my phone and go to the thing over and over and over again. Now the third thing is actually to start to consciously say no to going on your phone. This is one of the possibly hardest things to do because we so often, whether we're waiting in line, whether we're, we have five minutes to spare, whether we're going to the bathroom, sit on our phone or check our phone or in, integrate it in our day, just like it's another organ. And phones aren't an organ. Maybe they are in a sense, right? Because it's an organ where you can go get information and do things like that. But what ends up happening is it's something that we continually rely on. We rely on it in uncomfortable situations and we rely on it to the point of it becoming a crutch instead of something that actually helps lift you up. One of the easiest ways to break the addiction of phones is to start not using them at certain points in time and not reaching for it and consciously saying no. When, you're by, when you go to the bathroom, don't bring your phone with you. When you're going to wait in line, don't bring your phone with you. Or when you have that urge to check your phone because you have um, 30 seconds to spare, don't check it because what will happen is you will actually start to unaddict yourself from your phone consciously from your own actions. You know, actions show your intentions. And if your actions are to continually check your phone, then your intention is to not break your phone addiction and you won't break your phone addiction. And number four is to, if you can do this, and this is very hard for a lot of people, especially the younger generations, but to set your phone mostly for work or communication. If you set your phone for work and communication, then you know why you're on it and you know what you're doing and you're not getting addicted. But if your phone's for everything, if your phone's for your social communication, if your phone's for seeing what your friends are doing, if your phone is for checking Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Google, YouTube, over and over and over and over again, then what ends up happening is you do reinforce that addiction. You do seek gratification from your phone. And that's one of the reasons that we have so much self-helplessness nowadays is because people are looking through Instagram and they're seeing the happiest moments of someone's life, where in, in reality, they don't know how they feel, they don't know who they are, they don't know much about them besides what is shown there. And it ends up creating this idealized image of a person in their mind, which then they seek gratification from, and they try to only go towards. And if they can't get there, they feel bad about themselves. This is another way to make sure that one, that doesn't happen, but two, you're not addicted to your phone. Hey, it's Austin, it's getting pretty late at night, but I wanted to film a little, uh add on to the video on on addicting phones because i realized i didn't really talk about turning off notifications turning off notifications is such a huge deal when it comes to phones because otherwise that little constant dot flashing in different colors which makes you go towards it the flashing of the screen the i know on the samsung if you have it turned over the size actually light up to make you go and look at it. So doing that is such an important thing. I'm just finishing up editing the video now, so I'm gonna add this in and uh, see you soon. Now the last thing, a quick bonus on how to declutter your phone is to make sure you only have one page where all your apps are stored. You only use a handful of apps. Delete all the ones you don't use, move all the ones that you sparsely use off of your home screen, and then your phone's clear and you're able to use it anytime you want with ease, you know, figuring out the neuroplasticity element of finding the apps that you really want, but they're still on the same page, consciously using it, using it only for work or for school or for whatever you need the phone to be for. And also it's in grayscale, so it's a lot easier to use. That's a quick video on how to unaddict yourself from your phone. I wanna thank you for watching. In the comments below, respond with how you wanna unaddict yourself from your phone or what you're trying to do to make sure that you don't use your phone as much as a crutch as an addiction mechanism. And give this video a like if it helped you in any way. Subscribe to the channel it really helps me make more videos like this and allows me to continue to produce them. I wanna thank you again and I'll see you in a video soon.